So today was the first day um, in the mountains for the Tour de l'Avenir and uh, I thought why not compare the pros to the amateurs because they actually climbed the same climb um, as the Tour de France last year, the Grand Colombier. So the winner of the stage was Tobias Haran Johansson followed by Pipo Zana and Thomas Gloag. Gloag's good lad, going to do well. But anyway, I thought they, they had a slightly different run-in, but we'll, we'll go through some of the numbers first. So uh, if we look at Tobias Johansson, well, we can see the segment now already, but we'll, we'll go um, on to Tade Pogacar's numbers. Oh, actually, no, we won't. We'll go on... Um, Sorry, we'll go on Sepp Kuss's numbers. So this was the stage for the Tour de France, slightly harder than what they did in Lavenir. So they did, went up this climb here at like 5.6. Then they did the next climb at about 5.5. And, uh, and then the final climb, they did at 6 watts per kilo for 43 minutes. Obviously, Sepp Kuss spent a lot of time on the front, if you can remember the stage, uh, which Tadej Bagatcha did win um, with a sort of sprint at the end. But if we go on to Tobias Johansson, um, it's quite good he does his power, so he is tiny. He's 61 kilos, and his threshold's 350. I think it could be higher, but he does, I mean, he's not that small, but he is pretty small considering the numbers he's about to whack out. So, including the neutralized, um, we'll go up to the final climb. It was real easy, like 260 normalized, excluding the neutralized 224. I mean, that for these boys, it's not very hard, is it? It's like zone two, uh, really not very hard for the boy. And uh, into the run in the climb, always interesting to see how hard this was. I don't think it was crazy hard. It was like 350 normalized or something, but that includes the actual climb itself. Take away that, 325. It's tough, and these sprints definitely will like make you in an anaerobic state. You know, like the blood lactate will be higher. But nonetheless, uh, he did an outrageous amount of power. 372 watts of 45 minutes at 61 kilos is absolutely ridiculous um, from the young lad. And um, you can see here, I haven't actually seen the footage. I don't know if there is, but obviously he attacked. Um, at this point here with what six seven kilometers to go and then just rode his own pace 24 kilometers an hour for the last seven kilometers and um i don't know what the time gaps were they were a minute so he he put a lot of time into these boys um he put a lot of time into the boys um but the question is the question is as always what is the difference so unfortunately as you may or may not be able to see if we zoom in uh the 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 boys in the tour came from coolers uh but the lads from uh, the Lavenir went from Anglefour, uh, I believe that's correct. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, they did. So they, they went up a slightly different way at the beginning. However, fortunately for me, there is a segment that is basically from the junction. So from the junction, he did six watts per kilo in 24 minutes. If we look at Tade Pogacar, who won the stage, um, he did it in uh, 23 minutes. So you might say a minute over 22 minutes, uh, over like a 20 minute climb is significant. And I would say it is. However, I'd say there's two points to make on the climb. So first of all, poor Tobias Johansson had no teammates. So he's on his own, whacking it there. And that is a big disadvantage. So for that to be the case, um, you know, it's a pretty impressive ride from him. Um, and so if you look at Sepp Kuz, he did um, 372 watts as well, 360 watts here and average 23k an hour so you can see there's he only did six watts per kilo obviously he was like in the draft a little bit and it was actually quite quick towards the end like if you look on this part here um it was more like 385 on this three kilometer segment here and if we look at tobias johansson as well be able to have a little look at this three kilometer segment here he was doing 370 going 17k an hour he was going 17.8 so not actually too dissimilar it was more on the downhill part where they went a lot quicker and obviously that's going to help when you're in a group even if you're on the front you get the draft and the push from behind and you can see after this um it was very very quick and he was setting good pace here Sepp Kuz, but like you know when it's seven percent it's definitely um easier in a group um however obviously we do have to compare um oh sorry that was what's his face that was um big boy uh Johansson. if we actually look at Sepp Kuz himself um, we'll see. We'll see. The end part actually is a is a lot lot quicker, um, more like twenty five kilometers an hour for the last three kilometers, which again, you know, how are we going to compare this? So I think what we can basically say is that Johansson's numbers on a forty minute climb are basically the same as what they do in the tour. I think everyone can come to that conclusion. But obviously the difference is he had a real easy running, like like a joke of a running. I mean, it's obviously not that, but it sort of is. Like, I reckon 99% of you watching this video could have got round to the bottom of the stage, like, at the back of the bunch. It's, it's not very hard. But if we look, if we compare it to this stage, where it's stage 17, so already late. Grand Tour, but also, like, the preceding climb done at 5.6 and 5.5 watts per kilo. 
and that's just what makes these boys ridiculous. They can still whack out six watts per kilo after a stupid amount, like 280 normalized, three and a half thousand kilojoules. And that, my friends, is the difference between promising amateurs like old Tobias Johansson. Like, he'll get a World Tour contract for sure. But the point is, is that, like, he's really good, obviously. Can't say no. But you can see exactly what he needs to work on in order to win the Tour, which is, um, well, you know, being the leading couple riders at the Tour is being able to do it after, um, after a big day out and a big week in a big Grand Tour. And uh, that is the difference. But actual climbing speeds, obviously the speeds are different just because the bunch and stuff. But in terms of what's per kilo, he's right up there, the big boy, um, on a 40-minute climb. Pretty fresh. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And we'll see you in the next one.